Last time we pulled up our jorts and tore down the K24. Now it's time to rebuild it. After removing the crankshaft, it was sent to a machine shop to be balanced and the bearing journals were micro-polished. Before assembling anything, you want to make sure to get rid of any contamination. The first step is to clean the oil passages to make sure there's no buildup left behind. I used small nylon brushes that I ordered online. Then we can clean the bearing journals on the crankshaft. For this I followed the advice of others and used coffee filters since they don't leave behind any lint when using them. We're going to be giving the girdle the same treatment. We don't want any oily residue on the bearing surfaces or the mating surfaces. It is important that we keep these as clean as possible. The reason I'm emphasizing the cleaning and showing all of it is because making sure there's no contamination can be the difference between a successful engine build and an engine failing on you when you start it up. When we go to install the bearings, the only thing keeping in place is the friction on the surface between the engine block and the bearing itself. We need to make sure there is nothing that can compromise this, otherwise the bearings will be free to move around contacting other components. The bearings themselves also need to be cleaned. They may be brand new, but the manufacturer puts a rust inhibitor on them to keep any rust from forming when it's in the packaging, and we want to make sure all that is cleaned off before assembly. With everything clean, we can finally start assembling some parts. When installing the bearings, you'll notice one side has a tang, shown here. This aligns with the slot on the girdle side. When it's fully aligned, slightly compress the bearing and carefully push it down into the girdle. Align the bearing so that both ends are flush with the surface of the girdle, then just repeat for the remaining bearings. Now it's time to concentrate on the other half, so we get right back into cleaning the engine block. Again, make sure to concentrate on the bearings mating surfaces to make sure there's no contamination. Now it's time for more cleaning. This time we're cleaning the mating surface between the girdle and the engine block. We'll be placing Honda Bond here, and to make sure it seals the way it should, we don't want anything compromising the bond between the two surfaces. Now we're finally installing the crankshaft. Sort of. This actually isn't the final install. What we're doing now is using plastic gauge to make sure we have the correct clearances. If we look at our assembly so far, we have the engine block, girdle, and bearings installed. If we go ahead and add the crankshaft, you may expect it to look something like this but in reality, it's more like this. The crankshaft has a gap around it, and this is usually referred to as your oil clearance. This space is critical because it causes the crankshaft to glide on the oil. If this clearance isn't correct, it would cause metal-to-metal -metal contact and your engine would grind itself to pieces while running. The way we check this clearance is by using plastic gauge. Plastic gauge is placed on the bearing journal of the crankshaft, then as we torque the girdle down, the plastic gauge is deformed. We then measure the plastic gauge after deformation, and that will tell us our oil clearance. Now we can continue placing our crankshaft into the block. Try your best to do this carefully because there's no lubrication on the bearings, so we have direct metal-to-metal -metal contact so we want to limit movement. Cut pieces of plastic gauge to span the whole width of the bearing journal, and place it as close as you can to the top of the bearing journal. Be careful not to get too close to the oil passage holes, this could distort our results and give some false readings. Now carefully take the girdle and do your best to align the dowel pins and install it. When everything is aligned, you can give a few light taps with a rubber mallet on the outsides to help fully seat the dowel pins. Before installing the girdle bolts, we want to oil the threads in the bottom face of the washer in order to achieve the proper torque spec. Repeat this for all of the bolts. Now 
Now we want to torque the bolts to 22 foot-pounds in the sequence shown in the service manual. This minimizes the stress on the block and girdle and is the proper way to do it. Now in the same order, use a torque angle gauge and turn each bolt an additional 56 degrees. Remember, these torque specs are for this specific K24 motor. You should always reference the service manual for your specific application. Now we continue to tighten the bolts on the outside of the girdle to 16 foot-pounds in the sequence shown. With all the fasteners torqued to spec, it's time to remove them. Break them loose in the opposite order of the install. To remove the girdle, carefully pry it in the designated areas. Try your best to minimize movement. Remember, there's no lubrication, so it's all metal to metal contact. Plastic gauge comes with an indicator that will tell you your oil clearance based on the deformation of the pieces. All mine fell into the 0.038mm size and did not line up with any of the others, showing that my clearances are within the tolerance. Now we're back to cleaning everything one more time to remove the plastic gauge and to prep it for the final install. Remember to also clean the surface for the thrust bearings. While the crankshaft was out, I used a little bit of assembly loop to install the oil main seal. You'll see in a little bit why this may not be the best idea. With the girdle cleaned, lay a small bead of Honda Bond on the engine block mating surface. I'd recommend just using your finger to spread it to get an even coat. Look at examples of how much to put on because in this case you can have too much or too little. Now take some assembly lube and spread it on your bearings. Feel free to be pretty liberal with it, because too little can be a problem. After cleaning your thrust bearings, put some assembly lube on the flat side and install them. There's a designated cutout for them, and the lubrication will actually help hold them in place. Going back to the oil seal, it caused me to slip and drop my crankshaft which could have been a disaster so please, let me make the mistakes for you. I cleaned everything off and checked everything and didn't see any nicks or other damage so for now I'll consider myself lucky. So I installed the crankshaft again without it and installed the seal after the fact. Now we follow the same exact process we did for the plastic gauge earlier. Install the girdle and follow the torque sequence and spec for the fasteners. The crankshaft is spinning freely and there's no feeling of binding the first sign of a heartbeat from the motor. Here you can see the squeeze out from the Honda Bond. You don't want too much squeeze out because it can cause pieces to break loose and contaminate your oil when running. The last thing to check is your crankshaft end play. I did this and forgot to record, so I quickly redid it for the footage. My actual setup was much sturdier than shown. I fixed the dial indicator to a tripod and used a pry bar to push the crankshaft to one end of the engine and then pushed it to the other. The service manual calls for 4 to 14 thousandths of an inch of play, meaning I was within spec. So that wraps up the crankshaft install for this build. Next time we'll be assembling some of the internal components, but until then, thanks for watching and take care.